Today, in Roman history and antiquity, an Egyptian king reached out to the Roman Republic. At the time of war, the isolation of having no powerful ally and reaching out to a new relation in the Mediterranean set out less than 250 years of contact. On the other hand, Rome just ended the war with an emperor king. However, to understand how the first contact started, I will tell you from the beginning. Find out today about the relations between Ptolemy II Philadelphus and Rome. According to Livy and Dionysus of Halicarnassus, in 273 BC, after Pyrrhus' defeat against the Romans, Ptolemy II made diplomatic contact with Rome and gave gifts. Rome accepted the Amicitia, friendly relations with no strings attached. Livy used a different word, Sokiatas, in this case, an alliance. Cassius Dio's fragment, integrating into Sonaris' account, mentioned the deal as an agreement. However, after their initial contact, the Roman Senate sent three envoys to Alexandria. Quintus Fabius Maximus Gurgus, Numerius Fabius Victor, and Quintus Ogonius. According to Livy, Quintus Fabius Maximus Gurgus was a lover of Hellenism, and in 292 BC, he blessed the Temple of Venus, the Greek goddess of love. Also, he mentioned that Ogonius founded the Temple of Asclepius on Tiber Island, and Asclepius was the god of medicine. The statue of Asclepius came from Abidarus in Greece. Finally, throughout their relations, a few Romans served as mercenaries and common soldiers in the Ptolemaic military. As for meeting Ptolemy, the accounts came from Valerius Maximus, Cassius Dio from his Anaris's account, and Dionysus of Halicarnassus. The three envoys got gifts and headed back to Rome. They wanted to give it to the public treasury, but consulted with the Senate to get its consent. However, it refused and allowed them to keep it. The reasons were unknown. There might have been several possibilities. Trade, reacting to the geopolitics of the time. Fearing Carthage and the Seleucids under Antiochus I. For the second motive, Dionysus of Halicarnassus, Valerius Maximus, Eustinus, and Cassius Dio from Sonaris' account, Eutropius and Livy wrote of the Ptolemaic effort to defend Epirus during Pyrrhus' Italian and Sicilian campaigns because they had been allies since the 280s BC. The turning point was Pyrrhus' failure to finish his Sicilian campaign against the Carthaginians. Another issue was the First Syrian War from around 276 or 275 to 272 or 271 BC due to the antagonists of Macedon and the Seleucids in the Seleucid Empire having friendly relations, which led to political isolation for Ptolemy. Although the Western Mediterranean was initially not his main foreign policy interest, he contacted Huron II of Syracuse and Rome during that period. The irony was, despite the Ptolemaic navy having the largest number of warships and the largest navy in the eastern Mediterranean, around 330, Rome and Carthage exceeded that amount during the First Punic War, which leads to this chapter of history. In 252 BC, Ptolemy II reached out to the Romans and Carthaginians to mediate peace. Appian of Alexandria wrote about the event. The Romans and Carthaginians had friendly relations since the 270s and refused to give a loan to the Carthaginians at their request due to a lack of money. 
establishing relations with Rome set off less than 250 years of contact, and the last 20 years of the Ptolemaic Empire's existence was conflict, ally, and conquest by Rome. However, the initial contact was seemingly insignificant, but it played a role, especially in the First Punic War. Consequently, the role of a mediator came into Ptolemy the Fourth reign, and it may be a topic for another time. In the long term, it was not trivial, a part of the larger interconnected relations between various powers 